was like, ah, when I didn't have my phone with me, but I was pretty certain. I was like, it's getting near four. Hurry oh. up, you Hi. kids. So I yeah. went to- it's so nice outside like oh impossible not to go out I know I was out but I just did a little run around just to literally like 20 minutes because I've been inside all day I literally just lay in bed all morning oh Oh, divine I am I live by the beach and that's lovely but um like it is rammers right now and like there's a playground there and it was like a mosh pit of children and families and i was just like what are what are we doing this for if you people won't stay stupid beep i was so i know i know that must hurt you on a level like even deeper than me because you're just there watching the chaos Oh, have you seen, did you see the stuff that went on in, um, yeah, oh, oh. the girls sent it to me in the WhatsApp group and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reaction to have. <laughs> oh. I know my husband sent it to me and I was like, is this a deep fake? And he was, was like, like, I wish. This seems like it's a rehash from like the Black Lives Matter stuff. But then I was like, a Roman candle at the guards. Oh. <sighs> I know. I was like, is this kind of like Capitol Hill, but doctored? You know? Oh, um, it was just, it's tragic. Did you see all of the, the edited videos where they cut out the start of it with the Roman candle and they just saw the guards chasing people down the crowd? That was the only clip. They were like, the guards are on the rampage. This is against our rights. Oh my God, like, you know what? That's the clip I saw. Now that yeah. I th- think about it I didn't see yeah so the first part of it was that it was all peaceful and people were like you know the guards were in a line and they were just you know and then there was this lad with a Roman candle a stick and a Roman candle and he was making his way up and oh yeah the tall guy in the white yeah yeah oh my god just so scary like oh horrible just horrible but anyway I mean thank god thank god for crafting Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Sophie, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, My pleasure. I guess we'll start at like we mean to begin and I'll just introduce that. I'm like, My name's Grace and I'm the host of the Babbles Travelling Yarns podcast. And I have been listening to Sophie on the Creep Dive with her co hosts, uh, Jen O'Dwyer and Cassie Delaney. Cassie owns the production company, isn't that correct? She told tales. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but I wanted to get Sophie on um, because she's a knitter. And I, I suppose the first thing I want to do is just find out, like, where did you start knitting? How did you start knitting? Did you start in school or what? No, I'm a really recent um, knitter. I started in 2018. Um, I started because I went into AA and I found it excruciatingly hard to sit in meetings and like focus and just be there and just sit and be like, it's just, I, you know, tragic how bad I am at that. Um, and so like, I think my friend and I had been like, oh, will we like do a knitting course or something fun like that? I think she'd suggested it to me and in my like kind of manic, like knee jerk kind of way of like taking something anything and turning it into like a toxic crutch I was the only one who like went for it and then went for it in such a huge way that like my friend was like okay uh I guess uh you know nobody expected this level of pathological obsession Sophie but fine so I did like a class or two in um on Francis Street in oh, the constant knitter exactly yeah. upstairs but I pretty quickly just kind of got stuck in lots of YouTube tutorials and um, actually Deirdre O'Sullivan who's another Irish writer and she writes a lot of like YA fiction and um, she actually put me on to Wool and the Gang which is obviously a very you know expensive little 
obsession there. But I think what Wool and the Gang did for me, which was great, was kind of helped me learn how to read a pattern. And they really do put it together really it simply. Doesn't it? It just it, you just get a package, you get your needles, you get the yarn, you get everything, and you can yeah. follow it by step. I've not I've not actually got one of their patterns because I'm such a cheap crafter. And then, oh my god, yeah. You see behind me. You've a lot to get through. It's not true. I am not a cheap cheap crafter. Mm. I <laughs> I buy everything around me, but this is because it's craft shows that I go to, which I can't go to anymore, which has saved me a lot of money this year. But I look at all in the gang and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And then I'll suddenly show up and spend 400 euro in a shop. So, <laughs> Well, the thing with Wool in the Gang that I think is great, actually, is if you sign up to your, their newsletter, you get a free pattern every week. Ah. Yeah. And there's so many nice ones, um, actually. Hang on. Right now? Is actually, one this is Wool in the Gang. Yeah. So this is like a bomber cardi. So if I stand up, you can see it's quite short, kind of slouchy, and it's got like this really nice big cable down the sleeves and down the front. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's so nice. Uh, and actually, I, my current work in progress is a green version for a listener of The Creep Dive. When I first met you, actually, not met you, but listened to you, yeah, uh, I, I heard you knitting in the background, and then I was like, this is it. This is it. This is the podcast for me. I know it's nothing to do with po podcast. I know it's nothing to do with knitting, but I was like, but she is knitting. That's what's important. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah. Or something. Oh no. I was the knitter from the beginning. I can't, I've never crocheted, but Cassie, our co-host on the creep dive, like was a great crocheter. Um, I haven't seen her crochet in a while, but like she, you know, moves around a bit, a bit of macrame here and there, you know? And um, you'd need that. And uh, yeah, so um, she is, yeah, I think we got into it around similar time, actually, um, into our wool, like our yarns. And actually, the first time I met you was at a live show of the Creep Dive um, Cork. in Cork. Yes. And you were like close up to the front and you were knitting. Yeah. And you had an amazing present for us, some of which I still have, actually. I still have the amazing yellow skein. I'm just kind of like, I'm plotting what's going to happen with it because it's so vibrant. Yeah. And um, it's a bit, um, it's a bit uh, like maybe a hat for swimming at night so you'll be seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's if for anyone i guess watching slash listening that don't know what podcast we're talking about it's called the creep dive and what grace means by like how at odds with the content our craft love is is because the creep dive is about icky horrendous stories and like little else so yes. yeah the most the most poss possibly the most gross things you can possibly think of but fully so fascinating that you cannot look away from no uh, totally um so yeah this is a listener called Yvette uh got on and I love making things for other people because I have too much stuff I think you know that feeling and um, so I'm really excited I'm making it in this really beautiful green and then after this version I have a red version um, ordered by another friend of mine, Louise. You um, don't mind knitting the same pattern over and over again, I guess. But I can't, I, this one has large yarn. It's, it it's, quick. Quite it's quick. Yeah, it's like a two day or maybe three. Um, and yeah, I don't mind, but I definitely, like, I do have limit. Like, I actually made, hang on, let me get these hats. This is a very simple hat. Um, that is one of Wool and the gang's uh, free patterns. And like, um, I had to give like five people a kind of a nice present. So there was just this like one weekend where I was only making this hat. And I was just like, ah, yeah. this again. But like, it's very cute. And uh, I genuinely actually, as long as I'm knitting anything, I'm quite happy. Do you know the way? So that's really, uh, yeah, good. So. 
actually, I had a question from a friend of mine who um, listens to the Creep Dive as well, and she had a question for you. She said, um, have you ever had an experience where you've given someone something and they've totally not appreciated it? Because Yes. Oh, my oh, God, completely. <laughs> oh, my God. I gave my mother, um, she's the biggest defender, um, offender of this. Yeah. So I knitted a really nice kind of fairly fine, like especially fine for me, like it was probably on fives or something. Like I don't work in like super fine that much. Although I did two cardigans last autumn that were quite fine and, uh, and I really did like it, but it, it was like slow enough, you know. This one's been going for two and a half years. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. Anyway. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so I did it this quite fine striped. It was like a boat neck with stripes and really cute stripes. So like I did one for me that was like predominantly this really tomato-y red with um, a yellow stripe kind of thick enough. Well, you know, like about five rows thick. Yeah. And then like a very, very subtle uh, pink, like sharp pink in just one line above the yellow. So it's just really nice kind of, very kind of two dimensional looking kind of um, cardigan. And my mother admired it one time and I was like, I'll make her one in her kind of colors. So I made it in like, I think it was blue with a green stripe and like an acid yellow for that tiny stripe. And like, she loves kind of that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, she's tolerated it as a gift. I've seen her wear it all right. She does wear it. Okay. But I mean, she just doesn't appreciate these things. But she's oh. not a maker of things. Like she doesn't make things physical things. So Yeah, my mom's the yeah. like she's my mom like she made all of our clothes when we were younger. She made so loads sweet. of like really good sewing machine sewing, you know, she loves cooking. She got into she did a little bit of crochet and a little bit of sewing and a little bit of knitting, but I remember I was in Australia and I wanted to, and I really gotten into that obsessive level of knitting. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I would not. I got so deep down. I'm, I'm so deep down the bottom of this hole. I'm going to turn into a sheep. Um, I know. I'm looking at your craft room. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided, oh, I'm going to get my mom and dad a pair of socks um, each. And Had you done socks already? Yeah, they were the first thing I did, and they're Ooh, great. you went they're straight to a sock. Yeah. Um, oh no, I think I knitted other things, but like this was my first. Like we call them knitting with a capital K. Okay, so, like it. Capital, like this is your your graduation project. Is okay, love it. I have my graduation project, project here to show you after. I can't wait. So it's like your journeyman, you know. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, I made these socks for mom and dad and I posted them home for Christmas. I didn't make it home that Christmas and I was coming home anyway. But six months later, I mean, a year later, I came home and I was just looking for something. Uh, I was staying at home while we were moving, blah, 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 blah. These little, these pair of socks at the bottom of everything. And I was like, mom, did you ever wear them? She's like, oh, Grace, they're a bit itchy. And I was like, <gasps> oh, it me two months to make these socks. No. I got her to pick the colors. She was so she would like them. She's like, oh no, they're really itchy. That is just galling. <laughs> galling. My dad also had not worn his socks because they were too good. And I was like, Oh my That's god. Good. Forget really those good. people, Grace. Forget it. Forget them. You don't they're need that level of texture for me. Mm -hmm. But there <laughs> is people who like wear knits and there's people who don't wear do you know what I mean yeah. and I actually think it probably goes a lot toward kind of like just your sort of baseline body temperature like Seb and my husband says like that I'm a reptile or a cousin of reptiles because I'm so cold-blooded so I adore my knitwear do you know the way and um, so yeah I think there's like definitely something to be said for that stuff and like, there's definitely sensitive people that find kind of things itchier than others definitely yeah I think it's, also a, it's also a bit of a, a like um for my mom anyway and maybe for yours too I'm not sure but there's this kind of feeling that like my 
parents would have had hand knit jumpers and they would have been really itchy and awful going to school like in Tipperary mm. like in the 50s and it was a sign that you shirts. Could, yeah that you couldn't buy the nice like jumper interesting you know, out of like itchy wool and so there's always this concept that wool is itchy now even though I could give her I literally hand her cashmere and she's like did you make that now and if I said no it would be lovely and if I did it'd be oh a little bit itchy now this is a little bit itchy. <laughs> this oh. is giving me a little pause oh <laughs> that is so frustrating <laughs> nice though when someone get gets really excited with something you've done like so so much James I, now yeah, the yeah. is very good he loves when I make him stuff which of course means that I don't make him anything that is so funny. I've never made Seb anything, but he gives out so much um, because he says that it's like in our house, we're living in like a fluff apocalypse. <laughs> and the problem is, I don't notice. I kind of glide through the fluff um, as a relatively hairless individual. But Seb is like a beard. And like, even like while he was kind of ranting at me about the fluff apocalypse, I could see fluff stuck to his beard like at the time and uh, so I do pity him like I've knitted this enormous and um, really big knit blanket and he literally it migrates around the house because Seb just wants it wherever he is not you know that kind of way so that is tragic for for me devastating devastating it makes life interesting you can't all like the same thing but yeah, no, I made a cardigan, that, that fine knit cardigan that I made two of, one for me and one for my friends. Now we have matching cardigans. But I do like getting like my bang for my book out of patterns that I, like I, I do buy patterns pretty much all the time. Like, um, cause I guess like Ravelry, I mean, I know there's lots of free on Ravelry too, but um, yeah. it's, but uh, it's never the free that I'm really attracted to. <laughs> so yeah. That's it. It was really nice to bring it to my friend. And I'd done it with like mohair and um, another kind of, would it be kind of cottony maybe? Like Could be. kind of Cotton two man. fine enough strands. And it kind of, I had a kind of a very light shimmery kind of lilac for her and a deeper kind of purple with it or a deeper lilac. You have like two separate balls, like one ball of mohair and one ball. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's, Ooh, yeah, two lovely. strands, yeah. So it's really nice. And then like, I think she just took such an interest that in the kind of actual putting so it glorious. together. Oh, and it was my first raglan shaping. And I was like high off the excitement of it. And like, oh, cause there's nothing I hate more than sewing bits of knitting together. I'm just like, this is an anathema. It is not what knitting is about. Um, so yeah, so I was very excited. I think I only knit top downs now. I literally only knit top downs. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. Oh, will I show you my um my graduation project? It's so lumpy and sort of horrendous. Um, but like it's a crafter's thirst trap because there is no way you could meet a person wearing this jumper and not be like, Did you make that yourself? <laughs> Let me see which way is it go. This way. So it's another big knit. In, Gorgeous. Um, it's got a kind of funnel neck. Oh, so, so good. It's like, you can see where it's quite awful. Like oh. actually through the, through the ribbing. Yeah, on that side, there's like a real kind of bungled bit. Oh, but like classic. Now that I'm kind of a better knitter, I would have been able to like read that be, be yeah. like that's a problem and fix it and even like I was still you can see like from the end like I was still like getting the hang of like getting my tension right from cast on and um, so but you know it's got a real soft spot I mean I've got a real soft spot for it in my heart and um, mine is the yeah. same it's um I was using the first pattern I ever made was actually for a baby 
Oh yeah. A little, sweater, a little sweater, sorry. The first kind of garment I made was for a baby and it was horrendous. <laughs> I pulled all over the shop and then it was actually for a pair of twins and I knit the second one, but my gauge was so off that it was actually like, there was one, one which was like a newborn size and then the second one, exactly the same. I did exactly the same, but obviously I was way more relaxed because it was definitely a six to 12 month old size. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. I love it. Oh, Almost like a fishnet jumper for a baby. The tension's just gone way off the rails. Oh, that's well, so in Australia, it's very hot down there. You need the airflow. But tell me now, Grace, how many different kind of crafts do you engage in? Because I know you do your spinning. Yes, I do spinning. So I spin and then I weave as well. And then actually I, I did a bit of felting, but I hated it. Interesting. And actually, today I started my first ever bit of crafting. Oh, I recognize that leg. Two little legs. Oh, that is so cool. Are you doing it in a kind of a dark green? Yes, I'm doing it in a dark green and I've got other greens here. It actually yes, gorgeous. Is a kit that I bought ages ago and didn't do anything with. Um, so I had some of the floss and I was like, oh, so it's going to be green. Beautiful. I love green. So in case anybody doesn't know, as well as a crafter and a podcaster, she's also, Sophie's also a writer and you've written how many books? Um, four. This is my fourth book coming out literally days from today. Yeah. So I've written two nonfiction and two fiction. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, uh, in my new book that's nonfiction and it's called Corpsing, um, there is a, an essay. So it's a collection of essays and it kind of like looks at a lot of things, but like predominantly like grief and mental illness and alcoholism and I suppose like a kind of womanhood or motherhood and like creativity. Creativity comes into it so much because right. I had, I, I had people asking me actually to ask you about if there was crafts in, involved in this new book. So I was like, please tell me more. There is. I'm so excited. Hang on, I'll show you a finished copy. Um, because there is an essay called Needle Girls um, towards the back of the book. And I think in it, I talk a lot about the part that crafting plays in me managing my mental illness so in it just in front of needle girls is the cross stitch pattern in the book and um, it's so cool isn't it and i have to say now it's it's not the one of the crafts that originally cr cropped out at me because i can't do anything apart from it I guess I can listen. The one thing I was doing actually when I was listening to this was catching up on all of the mother of pods actually. <laughs> mm, love it. Um, so I know though what you mean, because I'm very like that. I really like kind of mindless so that I, I can do. kind of get on with whatever I'm doing, like TV yeah. or reading or sitting in like AA or, <laughs> or like even podcasting, obviously. Yeah, you can't really count, like, you have to be counting your stitches. You can't really be concentrating on, like... Yeah, like, I'd still embroider while I watch TV. Oh, yeah. Sure. Something um, mindless, like Housewives or something in the background. Oh, yeah. Well, when I watch Housewives, I work on my tattoos, which oh. I see as another form of crafting. Definitely. It definitely. How many do you have, then? How many crafts do you have? Um, well, I, I can tell you via a little tour of my craft room, if you like. So this is my office slash pole dancing practice space slash my baby's nursery. And there's often laundry in here and my husband works on the other side of the desk. So hang on, let me bring you, got you around a little bit. Just I'm take, intrigued. Take my little microphone. A wormhole into someone else's life. I'm fascinated. Yeah, so this is like, my workspace horrifically messy but you can see all the pink sheets on the window is all notes for whatever I'm working on whatever I'm writing and so let me see uh, the big craft corner is kind of over here I hope it's not too dark Hang on. Oh, no, no. Yeah. that's where my baby sleeps that's my pole dancing pole 
Excellent. Okay, and so this is my big craft space. So um, sewing machine, which I don't use as much as I used to, I'll be honest. Uh, but I still think it's like the most useful thing to have in any house ever. And so I learned to sew when I was in secondary school. My aunt really encouraged me. And then when I went to art college, lots of the sculptures, I specialized in sculpture, but lots of my sculptures were kind of like fabric um, and a lot of sewing, kind of big costumes and things like that for performances. So then down here, this is, um, actually, do you know what this is? No, wait, the other one underneath is this. So this one is my embroidery and tattoo box uh -huh. so I keep them in the same box because it's all needles and so that's, that's kind of good. my tattoo gear and underneath there somewhere there's like uh embroidery and things like that so that's all like nice colors and um lots of uh needles and like antiseptic wipes and things like that so and, anyway. I know and then this is like <laughs> lots of patterns that's the first version of the haunted house lady that I made and then under there is like more paper for making transfers for tattoos and stuff and then this box is I'm currently so it's my, my next book is coming out on Thursday so like a few days from now and I um <laughs> I have been amassing a box of treats for Thursday <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, I suppose, stuff that you wouldn't come by all the time. And, and I'd see it and be like, oh, I'm going to buy that and like have it on publish day. So blueberry pop tarts. Yes. I adore. And I've got like three Caffrey snowballs. Adore. Um, <laughs> special treat drawer. A special treat box. And then this is obviously my knitting um, box. It's actually not too bad at the moment. Like I've been really working down through my yarn yeah isn't that pretty restrained okay i need to can i just show you something real quick? yes i need to see oh my see god that bed is entirely full of yarn like right. and then <gasps> here it's disgusting sophie oh. no it's incredible it's like a <laughs> wonderland this bag down here is all full of undyed yarn that i'm that i'm this is my uh my trusty oh your dying my, kit but no this is actually just my my uh my work or uh my toolkit from college from our college i love it <laughs> but that's, like, that's amazing yarn that i need to dye that is i wouldn't be able to sleep at night frankly grace there is some of my efforts with the uh, oh. haunted house lady so that's um, the red one I did, uh, it's kind of red and pink, and that's the original one, the black one. And I, like you, actually, I have um, greens. I've got some greens to do it in next, which I love. And also on the other side of it is the coloring in. So I'm not big into coloring, but I did color in one to kind of give a sense of it. And then in here is, um, it's not as attractive, but this is like, where I keep my pole dancing shoes, my pole dancing outfits. Um, this is all Creep Dive merch packaging stuff, actually, because this is my merch factory. This is oh, a box oh my God. of yes. 36 walnut whips. Oh, actually, it's not, it's not just the box that you use for something else. It's just no, it's just full, just full of walnut whips, which I'm obsessed with. Um, empty in my house. Empty. Well, empty. yeah, I'd say that like there's probably about 20 left in it. But um, yeah, that's kind of pretty much the tour of my craft space um, and my crafts. That's kind of the extent of them, um, which I think is pretty restrained. Pretty restrained. I think that is very, very, very reasonable looking at my you're definitely like not to make you feel worse but your yarn scenario the yards and yards of yarn are making it's making me feel better it's making me want to actually immediately start buying some just because now I, I think feel like that's a perfectly reasonable thing for me to do Sorry. to make me feel better i think that you should do that <laughs> Sorry, i want to buy some of mine <laughs> messing with my lighting um Oh my God, I know. Well, I would buy anything that you wove because it's so beautiful. The whole other so box here full of yarn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Not 
I well, I'm very know. honored that you're taking up a bit of cross stitch to make my pattern. I love no. it. Well, actually, I'm really glad because I bought this. Um, I've, I get, I go through these phases, exactly like you're saying, of getting completely obsessed with, you know, different crafts. So the knitting, of course, was with me. And when I was traveling, I was actually, I was like, oh, do you know what? It's really portable. And then yeah. I wasn't thinking about the stash, though. Mm, no. Slightly less portable. <laughs> you can but when i got to australia my backpack was about 90 percent yarn that i picked up and i feel like it's hot like traveling's always hot like you know if you're not in a hot place you're going through an airport or on like a 24-hour bus and you're like sweating and um, and like the last thing you want is to be like coated and draped in yarn like that's so Hi. funny because I, I had been only knitting socks, which are small, they're light. And I was like, I'll use socks later, surely. And the yarn that was in my bag, I wasn't making, you know, I'm quite a slow knitter and I use finer yarn, I guess. Mm. So it was mostly just serving a really great purpose as a pillow on those long Excellent. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad thing. You definitely need that. And how can I, may I ask, is your uh, dress going for your wedding? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, have I now, it just I mean, activated some terrible guilt? Uh, yes. Or yeah. upset, because yeah. I know it's so hard for everyone trying oh. to plan nice things to do for their weddings at the moment. I think it's just the fact that I want easy things and I've made it really, really complicated. Interesting. And yeah, so I'm like, hmm, do I push it back another year just to get the dress or do I just <laughs> go ahead? No, I've got, I've got it cast on for the second time. I for the changed second? Yarn. Yeah, the ah. first, time, first time I had actually hand spun it. Um, but the yarn was kind of coming cream. It was kind of coming up a bit cream and the rest of the dress was all ivory. And I was like, I don't really want to cream. Do you know, it would look a bit, I don't know. I didn't want to kind of a. Like a you'd be the only person who'd see it, but it's your wedding dress. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. So okay. I got instead, I, a friend of mine has an incredible source for a hundred percent silk in right. lace. So I was like that, I'm going to get some of that. Uh, so I've, I've cast on with that and uh, didn't realize how hard it is to knit with silk. It's fine. It's going to be fine. Gonna, <laughs> oh, I just no. have to sit down and do it. Like I have the pattern drafted up. I have all of the, the like the lace um, all organized. I have it all ready to go. I just need to sit and do it. So, but it's kind of like the embroidery it's, or it's kind of like cross stitch, you know, that you have to be looking at it. Very complex. Cause I think I so, the first go of kind of the neck and shoulders. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then I realized that the front of it didn't make any sense. And I was like, Oh no, what am I going to do? Um, and then I just realized actually, and that was actually at the same stage where we decided to postpone the wedding for a year last summer mm. i was like just forget about it ah! and uh you know as you do um completely relatable and fair and now i'm at the stage where i'm like no i really need to do that so i spent a night there about two weekends ago going over the pattern again and trying to decide on the sleeves that i wanted and now i just need to sit down and do it well that's um as well. it's so going to be an undertaking but you know yeah you're well able so look, they, it'll be it, incredibly special. Even if it turns out crap, what are they going to say? I made it myself. Exactly. <laughs> and if it's not, if it's too good, nobody will notice that you made it yourself. So, you know, be me. Have that really lumpy, uh, loose, ratty <laughs> jumper. <laughs> Marriage is not easy and nothing is perfect. This exactly. is a symbol, etc. Cetera, et it's all et about letting go perfection yeah yes. yeah there's no there's no perfection in this house anymore <laughs> never was <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite thing to kind of do while you craft oh i mean 100 percent listening to podcasts mm, that's nice and like to be honest i'm only trying to catch up with you guys because you're pr you're producing I don't know how many. Every time I look at my phone, there's a new one out. And I'm like, what's... Oh, wonderful. 
I'm 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 listening to um oh, oh, also listening to cults. Oh, uh, I haven't heard of that. Oh God, it's another. brilliant. Delicious. It's kind of it's really it's really highly produced. Mm. Uh, so it's a little bit like script. It's all scripted, you know. So there's no like chat. Oh is, yeah, yeah. I yeah. use you guys first, so that's fine. Um, and then um, yeah, and then case file, of course. Case file is good as well. Mm. It's like I fall in and out of love with podcasts all the time. And right now I'm in a real fallow period. I can't find anything that's really holding me. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what it is. Like, I just feel like, ugh, are they, I don't know. I'm listening to um, an audiobook while I'm crafting a lot at the moment. And, hmm. Well, I'm listening to uh, Somebody to Love by Alexandra Hemmingsley. Um, do you know her? She is English. Oh. She's written before. In fact, what I really like reading her work in the past is because she's written about like, kind of like, I suppose, like learning how to swim, learning how to run um, from this like really nice, thoughtful, like interesting, honest kind of way. Like, you know, um, and I've, so I really like her kind of general work and then she brought out this book and um, that like the top line of it's just really fascinating basically she and her uh partner um went through like a lot of pain a lot of you know heartbreak and trauma um in order to conceive their child mm -hmm. and then while she was on maternity leave her partner um came out uh, to her as trans and affirmed oh their identity um, as a woman. And like, so somebody to love is like this really, really um, like, you know, at times brutal, but like kind of coming to terms um, with that for all of them, uh, you know, for their oh son um, you know, and Alexandra and her, now ex-partner they weren't really kind of I suppose it's she's quite honest about it in the book and she's like look I'm straight and it's as you know I'm as straight as my partner is a woman we can't these aren't things we can change about ourselves and you know I just but I I think the whole story of her coming to terms with it is really honest and um, it's respectful of her partner's um experience um so you know doesn't really encroach that much on yeah. her partner um on his uh, her experience uh so that's it's really very fascinating. fascinating yeah so I that's really good so i'm enjoying mm -hmm. that because um do you know um ravelry um, yes Yes, the actually owner, the owners of Ravelry went through a very similar thing. Interesting. Exactly the thing. Yeah, um, Cassidy um, uh, is trans, and mm. she she uh, is married to Jessica, and they had like two kids and stuff. And the whole the, that sounds like, like very very similar mm. to to how that went on. I I I don't know their own personal history now, but. Um, yeah, it's very, very fascinating, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's a big, um, it's a thing now that like more people are, I just suppose like, it's so great. It's just so wonderful that people are feeling more like, you know, like can acceptance see. that they actually yeah. can step into their real identity. And I mean, I know two other couples um, and it's interesting how different people are navigating it in different ways and like, you know, it's really it nice waters, really isn't it yeah for like well yeah for everyone really um like and uh you know i'm i'm noticing like you know there's a lot of staying together and i think that's so nice because i think it's really recognizing the fluidity of human sexuality and yeah. that you know that you love the person like regardless of what alexandra um you know decided was right for her and um, you know I, I really like seeing that there's just you know just so much more acceptance and so yeah it's just like a really interesting insight and like you know it's obviously an area that like I guess I feel like I'm really still like 
still learning and looking to trans friends for guidance and like obviously even there like I you know misgendered momentarily and like it's you know um it's just so good I think that we're all becoming that bit more aware and having more awareness um of just how important uh you know the language is uh like around respecting people and you know yeah and honoring uh, them and so that's what I'm listening to and I I craft while I'm reading Again, if I'm doing a mindless enough kind of stretch of yeah. it, I would, and only on my Kindle, I can't really do it with hard, back, hard copies. I'm in trouble because I have recently absolutely gone obsessive mode straight into reading and it's gone, it's actually really affected my knitting uh because i cannot i can't knit and read i kind of i'm actually looking into <laughs> like those automatic page turners because i'm like oh. I need, but they cost a fortune because they're kind of ge- geared towards kind of people with disabilities with um but i really want one i'm like fascinating oh, i think I've ever say oh. something like quite outlandish like hiring a reader i mean <laughs> that's why all but and then I kind of got turned off audiobooks for some reason I think it's because I came across one narrator I didn't like and I was like oh no and then oh, I, I find thought, I can't listen to fiction like at uh, all like I find it extremely hard to follow follow characters and things like that so it's all non-fiction on my audible for me um which I really like yeah I should try, I should try some non-fiction I think at the moment I need entirely a different world to to take me away from right now i can't deal with reality right now which is why i'm <laughs> completely fair um, oh, that, oh actually the other thing i do a lot is watch my favorite youtubers um, oh, yeah. so i mean for starters you um i find your channel really really relaxing and such a kind of comforting space like away exactly what you're describing yeah. away from the kind of hellscape um i really like booktubers um i don't know if you're into booktube i because i've just recently got into i mean that's what got me into all the fantasy stuff is all of the booktube mostly all on tiktok and, and reels and stuff okay um, i didn't get into i haven't gotten into kind of the long form kind of videos on stuff because i i try not i try I'm try- I'm finding that if I get a review, if I listen to a review of a book, it'll color what I think. Mm. So obviously, so I'm like, okay, just tell me what it's about. If it's got some, you know, if it's got a hook that I'm interested in, then I don't want to listen to you anymore. I literally just want to read the book and make my totally. own mind. Totally. Yes, so, completely. And yeah. like I um, review books for The Sun Independent. Um, and yeah. now I've been a bit slack, haven't done a review in a couple of months because I've been quite busy. Uh, but I always think like it's a mark of like a maybe like less kind of experienced reviewer uh, to outline the plot a lot and there's no it really bugs me if somebody outlines the plot too much I want like three or four sentences of what this book is about and then I want the rest of the review to be like what is this book like you know like uh, what, so oh yeah I'm really picky about that and um, there's one gal on booktube that i love her name is lauren on the books that's her channel and I, she does um videos about uh dnf do you know what dnf stands for yes yes <laughs> i've got one of them at the moment looking at me and i just cannot pick it up oh, so DNF so. did, not, did not finish so you just yeah. abandoned it like a child I find that her DNF videos are really useful because if there's something that was kind of like, you know, on the peripheral of my mind to kind of read or get, um, you know, that'll kind of strike it off my list pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So that's really good. And um, I think it does it depend a little bit for booktubers. Does it depend on, you know, finding one that has your same taste? I Mm, I think so. Yeah, I was listening to a review on a book that I recently read and just the stuff that they were talking about did not bother me at all. And it made them mm. like give it like a one star review. And I was like, I really enjoyed it. So it's just so 
personal, isn't it? Yeah, you want someone on your wavelength, I think, somewhat. Yeah. But like as well, I like I'm crafting and knitting and stuff because you you can get the pattern, but literally you can make it any color you want. You can shape, make long sleeve shorts that you can make it to fit yourself, your, make mm. your body all the one pattern. Yeah. So it's different about books in that way. I don't know. I think I get it. Yeah, I think people are finding it quite hard to read in lockdown as well. Um you know like I think it's the kind of underlying anxiety that everyone's dealing with like is kind of it's a disrupting our ability to focus like I think yeah something because you're always kind of with tension in the back of your head head buzzing yeah and um yeah so like at the moment say when I'm doing tattoos I am watching housewives as you mentioned um, I'm in the middle of Beverly Hills and um, it's just like mindless enough because I suppose like you can't rip back a row when you're <laughs> tattooing yourself. So um, it, that's kind of like just mindless enough for the activity at hand. But like I feel really like Housewives washes over me and tattooing like really subdues my mind in the way that all the other crafts do as well. So it's really, it's really nice. I've really only discovered it really lately, like in this lockdown, you know? Um, so that's really nice. Do you want to see some of my handiwork? Yeah. Have you got your, where's your little? A strawberry. Little yeah, your strawberry. Oh, there she is. Did you it's put actually, the little on it? I didn't. I'm still very into the outline. Sorry, let me tilt the computer it's because the strawberry is at such an angle. So cute. I know. I'm very proud of that because that's my first color work and then this is um a black I one i love this yeah i'm that very proud of the thing so what were we saying oh yeah what we like to do while we craft yeah just kind of how, how it puts your mind at ease i guess you know yeah um, that's something that a lot of people have said to me a lot of, a lot of people have contacted me actually wanting to start knitting in lockdown to try mm. and to calm their mind down to try and just start a new craft and absolutely you know, and fill the hours i guess yeah, do you so think that you like, cranked out loads and loads and loads more projects than you would have in like 2018, 2019? Or? Mm, like maybe, but my probably days have not changed that much in that like kids tend to fill your hours like yeah. pretty solidly. <laughs> so I think I still have the same amount of knitting time. Possibly even less, actually, because I had a baby for the last year. And the yeah. one thing babies really ruin is your crafting. Like, it's so hard to craft when you have, like, a newborn and stuff like that. It's a thing that you kind of can't really do because they're yeah. just la latched onto you for, like, all yeah. around, yeah, all hours of the day and stuff. So that's kind of funny. I find, like... I'm kind of really, I'm really glad, and I think a lot of people might feel this, that I already had crafting coming into this year and pandemic because like it was such a kind of already sort of, um, you know, in place outlet. And like, um, like I think my crafting is like really knit together with, you know, like the kind of mental illness that I have, which is kind of a bit chronic. Um, I have bipolar or I am bipolar and it's such a kind of a funny like flavor of mentally ill because sometimes describing it it almost sounds like a kind of a helpful positive thing <laughs> like there's a point with mania that you're actually like well i'm getting Productive. loads done and i'm not sleeping and i'm like talking too fast and freaking everyone out but like look at my output here and um, so i find that like because with if you're kind of i find if i'm getting kind of manic like it's not like I can treat it with crafting obviously I treat it with my medication and counseling but I find that my crafting really helps when my brain is just like tipping up over into kind of like a bit of an episode or kind of manic uh thinking or behaviors because I can kind of like sort of reroute some of that kind of mania like yeah. by crafting like I really find that it sort of helps to subdue my mind a bit and subdue what's going on and it's so funny because like you're busy and you're keeping something and you're producing something you're able to focus 
some part of you that is yeah spiraling a little bit yeah yeah definitely like one of the things I experience kind of with I feel like I'm getting manic is that I have this like weird completely uncontrollable urge to talk mm. oh, like and it's like it's just kind of like it's like a as I say geyser 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 it's like something like that. It's completely beyond my control, really. And I can hear sometimes myself doing it or I can see my husband looking at me and I'm like, I'm doing it. And the words kind of come out slipping over each other and it's so unpleasant. But like like you describe, like it's sort of like a kind of way to like burn off or kind of run off some of that. Um, like a pressure release, like a guy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And the thing is like, so I've been, you know, like hospitalized, uh, before and in hospital, um, I did OT, which is, um, occupational therapy for anyone who's not, um, familiar. And I, I guess I didn't, I suppose I didn't ever really recognize that like I was doing OT all Mm. along with my knitting, drawing, everything, um so when I kind of got to I was in hospital and I was at the OT sessions I was like oh yeah this is giving me some some respite from what I'm experiencing in my mind and uh so in that way I feel like I came away with this kind of like sort of elevated kind of respect and understanding for like just how really really powerful it can be yeah you know me feel way better about my crafting because yeah because it's essential it just because when I when I'm like have a day off of work or whatever I'm like oh can I just sit on the couch and knit no 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 no, no. it's too you're too you know just you know get up and do some cleaning or do some this or do some that you know no. I always feel like when you work so hard craft. yeah it's like a guilty thing but no it's no. therapy it's no. therapy and you need to come down off the kind of intensity of your job. Like you have a job that is so demanding physically, emotionally, everything, just even like in terms of actually sapping your bloody sleep and your sleep routine. Just remember, and... I have a day off tomorrow. <gasps> divine, divine. Surprise day off. I have oh a semi God. day off because one of my kids is going back to school. So that's Are exciting. You- so excited just one of them still one is better than none I guess yeah like I'm really excited for me but I'm really excited for them as well do you know the way like I'm excited for all of us to just not be in a house together like for three months straight like anybody would get sick of anybody in that scenario even if they are your kids and you love them I mean I am great and they're sick of me (laughs) they hate me now like I need them to leave so that they can remember that they like me (laughs) and vice versa like Oh, totally. So that's going to be really nice. But yes, I would never die and play how much crafting kind of gives me, especially like, actually, I do remember like that time I was in hospital that I brought my knitting and they took my needles away from me yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. And I was so bereft and I was like really petitioning them to give me them back. And they were like, you can knit by the nurse's station, you know, obviously really trying to like, you know, help and find a solution because they obviously, you know, meet every kind of person there. And like, they totally, totally recognize when somebody has, you know, sort of some kind of solution to help themselves. And like, you know, that's, so it's great. In fact, I knitted that jumper that my mother hates when I was in the hospital. No. There you go. So it's haunted with um, yeah. that, that manic episode. Maybe that might be why she doesn't like it. Maybe. Maybe she just gets this kind of weird buzzing sort of energy from it. And she's like, there's something wrong here. But yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. So yeah, occupational therapy really opened my eyes. It's like, this is what we're all doing. Do you Actually, know that kind of way? Really, I, I never thought about that. And it's something really interesting because I... Um, I've, I've kind of an interest in kind of elderly, um, kind of, uh, elder, I, my first job ever when I was 17 was working in a nursing home and mm. it was just so hard just to see them sitting there. Yeah. Doing nothing. And yeah. 
couldn't do anything because I was so busy running around because we we're so understaffed, you know. And, For sure. And the, one of the things that um, when I started working in a hospital then was, again, like you'd have elderly people who'd come in on the trauma ward specifically, actually. They really healthy running around people that just fell and broke their hip. Okay. So they are literally just dying to get out of the bed. They're dying to do something. So frustrating. Like, oh God, I wish I could go up and and just like knitting or crochet or something like that. Loads of the older ladies would absolutely love to do that, you know, mm. or you know, they used to do it. They have the knowledge and, you know, but the thing is that I'm a radiographer. It's not my job, you know, so I always have these grand ideas of, you know, ways to use craft as therapy. And maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I'll go into that later on because yeah. actually my, cause I went to art. Cause your background is perfect. Yeah, exactly. My background is kind of, um, well, it's printmaking. And then I went into bookbinding and mm. before the recession, I was looking into going into art therapy. Yeah. That's so really masters in that. Be amazing. And then, um, there wasn't really, unfortunately in Ireland, there's just not, there's not many opportunities, I guess. And when the recession hit, you needed it to go get a job. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Well, I, anyway, <laughs> that's what I chose because the panic and my mother. So I went and did radiography, but you know, there's so many ways that, you know, craft could be used in hospital settings. I think, you know, just definitely. to get people back up and OT definitely. I never thought about that before. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Oh, We're just okay. treating ourselves here. Yeah. And getting beautiful things at the end of it as well. And only giving them to people that love it. That love it, that love it exactly. <laughs> so um, I guess we're, we're almost at probably about an hour now. Maybe. But I just wanted to um, ask you um, where people can find you online. Where, where would they, um, yeah, just tell us where you can be found and all those sure. things. Sure. So I am... Um, very active and prolific on Instagram. So my handle is at Soph White Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> whoop. And my my whoop is spelled W H O O P. Um I'll put it in the show notes anyway. I'll put yeah. That. Yeah. What is well, I'm oh I'm a veteran of stupid online handles. So now that I, I settled on one and, you know, I think it made it onto one of my books like about two years ago. So my publisher basically kind of set it, set it in stone and was like, can you stop changing your handle? Um, so that's where you can find me. I also have a website that I really need to update called sophiewhite.info, basically. And they're the kind of main places you can find me. I don't tweet. I tweet from the Creep Dive account, which is at dive creep so once again brought my talent for um online handles to create the iconic dive creep account that jen and kathy to this day are so re rightfully irritated by <laughs> but it's become kind of a part of the personality like i couldn't change it no you can't change it yeah it yeah no no definitely not Fabulous. I just don't know how you do it all, to be honest. Like you, you're a writer, you write for, you have an art, um, what is it? Um, a, um, uh, a, a column in the Sunday independent. That's true. That is yeah, true. You have th th well, two podcasts and then extra Patreon content that you're constantly putting out. Um, you have three kids. I don't understand that whole section. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how any of that gets done. And you're, writing books as well and I just I well I always feel like I'm, I'm doing lots but I always feel like oh god am I doing any of it right though Do you know <laughs> like it's all sort of sacrifice or you know it all feels a bit like Tetris and I always worry when I'm doing one thing that I should be doing the other thing and blah -de blah and it's so tedious and well, you know I don't think it off, anyway. I know I don't think my husband feels the same way and um, that's important to note. But I also, I actually remembered another thing that I do um, while I knit, and that is work, actually. So you know yourself from editing. Like, I edit while I knit. I also do all of my, like, plotting, working things out, planning. So, like, so much of my work is sitting and thinking or walking and thinking or running and thinking. So like, I love having knitting to do while I'm kind of going like, 
what if we moved that chapter here and what if this took place and the story went this way and so it's really handy for that and I even um I even knit while I'm editing like wow. you know because it's like sorry editing the books yeah. Because so much of editing is also reading and reading and reading your work until you just hate it so much that you feel like you need to write an apology letter to be sent out with every single book sold. Um, so, yeah, so that's, I suppose, where I get a lot of my crafting done. Like it really helps me focus and come down to the moment because I think otherwise I do have a kind of very scattershot way of thinking and behaving as a kind of a natural personality. Like, and I notice my oldest son has it too very much and he is able to focus better if he's kind of drawing a bit. Yeah. 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 So it's think, kind of, yeah. that's a really think, good point. I think I'm going to yeah. use that because I'm also writing at the moment and I'm oh, currently right. just, I've decided just to scrap the whole thing and start from the beginning because I hate it so much. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you should never, ever completely delete. I no, always, no, no. yeah. Ever, everything is kept. Yes, and I good. Really, you know, some parts, like literally there's like maybe two pages in the current chapter. I really think I did really well. And it's like, do you know when nice. you actually make something and you like it? How rare is that? It's super rare. Unheard so like, of. Shovel, shovel this in somehow, but it totally doesn't match the story anymore. So I might have to write another. Anyway, I don't know. But you never know when that stuff comes back into play. It's really yeah. interesting. Like, you know, I do really extensive character profiles, for example, for all my characters when I'm kind of building the book before I've started writing it. And uh, like, these would be massive ridiculous profiles like what's the character's favorite saying what's their favorite swear word what are they afraid of stuff like that you know certainly with peripheral characters you're probably never going to get down into but I remember doing that um for one of the main characters in my first novel and then like that was you do this. Right? this exactly and then like if you um you know I do things like secondary character really detailed family trees for example really detailed idea of their parents their siblings everyone who kind of formed them basically because everything is about understanding your character better at all at every level and then yeah. you know it's so interesting because like my second novel came back to the same group of characters and that that peripheral character you know totally took a step forward in the plot we met her family in the book and I was like it was so funny when I went back to the profile, I was like, oh, this is her family. Oh, I've completely written this family. You know, it's kind of, it's great when you're kind of actually going, that's handy. That's real yeah. handy because you've got enough bloody writing and imagining to do with any book. So, you know. It's a really good point. I've mm. started to make, um, make Spotify playlists just for when I'm walking. Nice. Of if, if I come across a song that would, that like will somehow make sense or have a little okay that's maybe what she's thinking at that point or oh i love that thinking. and it just kind of gets me into the mood of where they are and how they how they've changed and how they need to change or how they need to cut on that know, is so them. important like i am the same like i write so obviously i write two quite different genres in that like i write kind of a creative non-fiction so sort of literary non-fiction and then i write like um, you know, what I hope to be really accessible, really fun, enjoyable commercial women's fiction used to be called chick lit. I had no problem with that. I call it bitch lit or hun lit in my head. But, you know, I just so the even yeah, the music that I listen to while I'm working on the two different things. Now, sometimes I listen to white noise and um, if I'm just like getting too distracted by the music. But otherwise, like I listen to really fun, like you kind of young playlists of like you know just bouncy cool crap yeah i know? can't listen to anything with words when i'm writing i have to listen to just really like just almost white noise or just instrumental stuff yeah um but like when i'm like you're saying you know when you're knitting when you're when you're thinking about stuff when you're in that thinking phase mm. that's why I listen to words <laughs> And I like that, that you kind of might have a playlist for different characters wow. or like, I, I know a gal who like does Pinterest boards for her characters. I have that as well, but Isn't I just cool? wonder at that stage, am I just procrastinating and should I just put the pen to paper and write for God's sake? 
Well, I genuinely don't think there's any level of prep that is too much for a book. Yeah. Like, let me, like I have, um, you know, uh, outline after outline after outline. Like when I'm working on books, here is an outline from my current work in progress, the novel I'm working on. And it is like, this is probably the third or fourth outline it'll keep being revised and revised. So like, this is like the character points of view. So there's three POVs in the book. This is like act one, act two, act three. And then within the acts, these are like the chapter moves between which character's point of view it is and stuff like that. And the kind of black writing is just kind of, you know, the top line of what's happening in each chapter. And then basically from there, I moved to like these kind of note cards, um, you know, this yes. is like full of full of books. It's so funny. All of these, like that's chapter eighteen. I'll filter this, um, and it's I just boil it down and down and down. Like it's all about like distilling and redistilling. And I just feel like whatever work you do, be it reading, for example, other people's books, um, you know preparing your own or kind of even if it's playing making spotify playlists to kind of nail what the mood in your book is i just feel like every step is getting you closer and closer to knowing your book really well that's so nice that everything you're saying today is just like oh yeah i'm yeah I'm doing a great job you really are you are on the <laughs> right track <laughs> you know it's um no, it's really good. I think it really stands to a writer if you do. Yeah. Because it's so interesting because some writers just put pen to paper and go. And I am like, wow, how do you do that? Because I need a level of signposting and directions. You know, I think I'm halfway between because sometimes mm. I'll just like, okay, I want to write this scene because it's just popped into my head and I think it's going to be freaking amazing. And I sit down and I write it and have a great time. Mm. And then I get to the end of the chapter and I'm like, I've no idea where that's going to go. What's happening there? Why has that happened? I get lost and I get stuck. Yeah. So I need those signposts as well. So, and I was just wondering, like, I just need to figure out a system, I think, to, to work out the actual plot and stuff and, and figure that out just to have something to hang on to and have everything make sense. Mm. So, um, I, first well, I wrote, highly recommend my grid. I, my I like grid it. system. I ha I know a girl called Catherine Howard who's just this absolutely brilliant thriller writer and crime fiction. And uh, but I love her because she's really quite fucked up. <laughs> and so her books are brilliant. And uh, I've seen her plotting process, and let me tell you, it is terrifying. It is an <laughs> Excel spreadsheet. It is so detailed, but it makes so much sense because with the thriller, you're often starting yeah, from you the end to, and working your way so back. Layers and you have so many bits and, and twists and things. And I'm like, oh, yeah, the so pieces, fun. it's such precision. The pieces yeah. have to fit together so well. You can't fanny around just having like fun. Like my books, I adore a bit of farce. I can't help myself. And like, I'm always kind of fanning around being like, oh, this would be really funny if the characters do a spoof of this or a spoof of that. Like in my new book that I'm writing at the moment, like, don't, I, why did I do this? Like in my second book, there was a one woman show. And I remember yeah. like messaging my cousin who is a playwright and being like, for fuck's sake, I've written a one woman show into my novel. So I basically have to write part of a one woman show. And she's like, yes, very stupid. Um, you have to be really good, in fact, to do that and possibly experienced in stage. And then in this third book, I've stupidly written in this like, like, I don't even know how to say it, like a, a musical theatre production of, it's all about Ireland's um, sweeping the Eurovision in the early 90s. Do you remember when we won four years out yeah. of five? And then we messed it up because we couldn't afford to host it anymore yeah yes completely and like i just i i went crawling back to nancy my cousin and was like i've done this thing i've done <laughs> okay. it again and actually my cousin nancy writes um musicals right uh, yeah she's written like three with her one of her like she doesn't really have a writing partner except with musicals because he does the music and she does the um right. The book and the lyrics and everything and like she just laughed her ass off and was like <laughs> This is going to be a disaster. I can't wait to watch. So that's kind of torturing me at the moment. Gorgeous. 
yeah. This has been so nice. Yeah, I could just stay nice and chat, chat forever. I know, I know. It's but so lonely, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the thing is that I, because I, 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 I do, I am lucky. I get to go out to work and I see people every day and I see new people every day. But it's I'm at this. It's just being wrapped in plastic, and the terror of meeting people every day is a yeah. different level of kind of weirdness. And I get home, and James, my beautiful, wonderful, lovely partner, who puts up with so much crap, um, has not spoken to a single solid person at all mm. and he's at the door like a dog going hi how are you what's your what what you can do? and i'm like i want to rip your face off leave me alone i want nothing to do with anybody oh my god awful that's a terrible combo you both uh, need the exact opposite thing awful yeah. yeah and then um it gets to a point where like i haven't podcasted in ages and ages and ages because i just find it weird to do it with him in the house because I'm mm. essentially talking to myself with my podcast. It's generally. Oh, yeah, just, yeah. I know. I love that. It, it I think it's amazing that you do that. I, I, I don't know. I think I kind of, per, I don't know why, but it's what I started doing. And to be honest, I actually think podcasting is what made me comfortable with myself. Mm, that's really nice. Because it's me talking to me. You're there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. like I'm looking at myself, I have to be okay with myself, and even if I'm not sure, feck it, like it's you know it's up there. And after a while, after maybe like the third or fourth podcast I did, I found myself laughing along with a joke that I made, and I was like, "Oh, I'm actually kind of funny." Yes. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. And it's just the loveliest thing. So after I've, I like, when I, when I'm like, oh, sitting down, oh God, I have to podcast. No, I haven't podcasted in ages. And then afterwards I'm like, oh, I did a really great podcast and I'm feeling really good about myself. So that is really nice. A little bit of a therapy as well. Like a little bit of OT for me too. So definitely. Cause I feel like listening and watching you feels really intimate. And I yeah. often feel like it's a lovely record of your life. Yes, and it's like it is just storytelling as well. Like so, that's you know why I'm there. That's why I'm here. You know what I mean? Like because I just love listening to the stories and the insight just into another person's day in life. You know, it's just it's just fucking gorgeous. But I'm really <laughs> happy that it's kind of brought you to a good place of self acceptance. Because I slink away from every episode of the Creep Dive and Mother Pod and the Creep Live, just like. Ugh. That was one of the worst yet. And like, Jen will like text and be like, that went great. And I'd be like, did it? I feel like it was horrendous. I'm like distressed at how awful that was. But like, I get like a kind of a, a hangover from like being, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I know. It's, but I think yeah. it, maybe it's something to do with, because I know that I do, I do, sometimes I do um, kind of group things. So at the moment we're doing, we're hosting a monthly meetup with online with, uh, as part of a kind of a year long spin along. Oh, lovely. And there's like 50 people uh, involved in the Zoom. And it's not like 200 or 200 and something. Um, so but um, it's still like, it, I do find exhausted after that. I do find I am exhausted after that yeah as well oh so yeah i don't know whether it's just like when it's just me it just feels like i'm just chatting away to me oh yeah it's and quite draining i think talking to a lot of people on zoom now i don't really find that with the creep lives anymore i think at the beginning i find them really hard because i love live shows and having that rapport with audience like getting the feedback from your audience i just think so i are you okay? I I can't really hear you. I can't see you. Okay, oh, you're back. You're back. Oh, there we go. Did I did I drop out or did you? You drop kind out? of froze for a bit, but I could hear yeah. you, and then you caught up with yourself. Oh, it says to me my internet is unstable. So oh, that's okay. Maybe it's a sign. <laughs> a sign that we we need to <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Stop and do something. And make dinner because I haven't anything. Oh yeah, I do need to make dinner. But um, listen, Sophie, it's just so lovely to chat to you. It's oh, so thank nice. you. 
Oh, thank and you I so much like for having me. Because so, I'm your fan girl. So no, no, yeah, no, you no. Acting to it's a mutual on, fan girl. Nice. Oh yeah, completely. I just like elbowed my way on here. I was like, I'll come. I want to talk. It'll be fun. Um, cool. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been a delight. Will I see you Thursday? Maybe. No pressure. Yes. See me. Th- I'll see you Thursday. Definitely. Brilliant. Actually, I've dragged, I've dragged so many people over to the creep dive. I got messages being like, oh, I, I saw you. you. I was like, of course you did. Of course, <laughs> never miss it. Oh, that's so nice. So, listen. See you on Thursday. Thanks a million again. And I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Okay, bye. <laughs>